all these words. Oh, I don't like words, but I like algebra. So I'm going to take all these words, you know what we're going to do, we're going to turn it into some algebra because I can handle algebra a lot better than I can handle all these words. Okay, integers removed from a list of five integers mean of, uh, we'll start with the five integers, all right? We'll call them A, B, C, D, and E. And we have the mean of these five integers. We'll call that M. M for mean. And all right, so we've got five integers, A, B, C, D, E. Their mean is M. That means if I add them all up, divide by five, I get M. That's much nicer than all that stuff up there, except there are six variables. And that's a little scary, but it's not as scary as all those words. So I've got one equation. Now I need another, well, I need a lot more equations, maybe. Um, I've got a lot more information up here. If I remove one integer, E, I don't like E, E's gone. If I remove that, the mean of the remaining four integers is three less than M. Well, I, that's an equation. Four integers I have left are A, B, C, and D, and the mean of those, divided by four, have three less than the mean I had up here. Yuck. The well, first thing I'm going to do with these, I'm going to get rid of these fractions, because fractions, eh. I'm going to multiply this top equation, multiply both sides by five, and I'm going to have A plus B plus C plus D plus E is 5M. All right, that's all fine and good. I'm going to do the same kind of thing down here. I'm going to multiply both sides by 4. And I'm going to have A plus B plus C plus D is 4 times M is 4M. Minus 3 times 4 is minus 12. What am I going to do with all this? What am I looking for here? I'll keep your eye on the ball here. <sighs> Positive difference between the mean, that was M, and the integer that was removed, that was E. So all I care about is ME. <laughs> That's right. All I care about is me. My mom always said that. Um, I don't care about A, B, C, and D. So all I care about is me here. I don't care about A, B, C, and D. It's time for one of my favorite strategies in algebra problems. Finding the answer without finding the answer. All right, that made a lot more sense in my head than when I said it out loud, but check this out. I don't want A, B, C, and D. Don't care about them at all. I got these two equations here. I'm gonna subtract this equation from that equation, and look what happens to A, B, C, and D. A minus A, gone. B minus B, gone. C minus C, gone. D minus D, see you later. All of them are gone. I take this equation minus that equation over here on the left. All I have left is E. Over here on the right, 5m minus 4m, that leaves just m. And then 0 up here minus a negative 12, that leaves 12, a positive 12. Minus a negative, you get a positive. Now, I want the difference between m and e. Bring that m over here, and I have subtract m from both sides. I get e minus m is 12. I found the answer without finding any of these variables. I found the answer without finding all these other answers. That's pretty awesome. But I know what you're thinking. You're looking at that 12 and you're saying 4 times 3 is 12. Is that just a coincidence? Here's a little homework for you. Try this problem again. Change that 3 to a 7. Or start with 9 integers and take away 1. So you have eight integers. Do it a few times and see if the numbers that sit right here, you always end up with a final answer that's just this one times that one. All right, and if you do find out that it is always just this number times that number, well then it's probably not a coincidence that our final answer here is just that times that. Well, if it's not a coincidence, maybe there's a slicker way to solve the problem. See, what we did here was a lot of algebra with a little bit of thinking. See if you can find another solution that is basically no algebra at all, but a lot of thinking. But in the meanwhile, we're going to try one more algebra problem. And we're going to see if we can find the answer without finding the answer. All right, we've got two positive numbers. 
The sum of their squares is 20. Well, that's just basically an equation already. I'm going to call the numbers x and y, and we've got x squared plus y squared is 20, and the sum of their reciprocals is 2. And we want to find their product. I'm going to go ahead and write down what we're looking for. We're looking for xy. Well, I mean, we could do some substitution here, right? Just one of our common strategies in algebra problems. I'm going to solve this equation for x in terms of y. First, I'll subtract 1 over y from both sides. I'll have 1 over x equals 2 minus 1 over y. And I could take the reciprocal of both sides of that. And this tells me that x is the reciprocal of, oh boy. Well, that gives me x in terms of y, and I can substitute that in up here and get, life's too short for that. That's going to take forever. Let's try to find something more clever. Um, well, I'm going to multiply both sides here by, by xy. Get rid of these fractions, because, eh, fractions. Multiply both sides by xy. I mean, getting rid of fractions worked really nicely here, so maybe it'll work again here. I like reusing strategies. If I multiply both sides by x times y, I get y plus x over here equals 2 times xy. And, well, that's also nice because xy is what I'm looking for. I can even give that a variable, call that p for product. I've got x plus y over here is equal to 2 times p, but now I'm, now I'm a little stuck. I figure I've got to use this equation somehow. But all I've got is this down here. Well, I can get x squared and y squared in this just by squaring both sides. I'll square this, I'll square that. If I square this over here, I have y plus x squared. If I square 2p, I get 4p squared. So now I'm going to expand this. I'll have y squared plus 2 times xy plus x squared is equal to 4p squared. Well, there's p again, and there's x squared and y squared x squared plus y squared is 20, so I can just put 20 right in there, and x times y is p, I have plus 2 times p, and that all equals 4p squared, and I'm looking for p. I've got an equation, it's just p, no x, no y, I don't need x and y, I need their product. I'm going to find the answer without finding the answer. Divide both sides by 2, I get 10 plus p equals 2p squared, a little rearranging here, and I'll have a quadratic. And now I factor. I'm going to get 2p minus 5 times p plus 2 is factoring that quadratic. Now that gives me two possibilities for p. Go back and read the question. Two positive numbers, p is the product of x and y. You multiply two positive numbers, you get a positive product. We can't have a negative answer. So our answer must come from this factor right here. 2p minus 5 equals 0. That tells me that our product is 5 halves. And once again, we found the answer without finding the answer.